Right, this is a rarity. We've got a clear sky with the sun out. We've just had a week of overcast, really miserable weather. Um, quite cold, sort of maxing out about five during a day and about two degrees at night, two to three degrees. So it's not been frosting. It's not been cold, cold, but it's been miserable. But um, regardless of that, we're going to look at some bootiers, I think, and maybe even the booty agris and this, see what they're looking like. This is mid February now, it's getting a little bit late in the day, about four o'clock in the afternoon. So we've got the sun in this area, so we'll concentrate on these palms here. So I've had a a viewer asked me some questions about the Boutia, or well, the Boutiagris compared to the Boutia, um, sort of hardiness wise. So, we're going to look at the Odorata and the Aerospatha and compare that to the Boutiagris. Um, we'll start off with the Boutia Odorata, this will be the most common one, the most common sort of Boutia that people will be growing here in the UK and probably in a lot of cold climates. Um, as we can see we've had several minus nights, we've had down to minus four this year and really no damage at all even on the very tips of this boot year odorata. It is tied up I have been chucking fleece bags over on nights sort of below three, four degrees. But um, to be honest, that's only been twice this winter so far. I've had to put bags on and that's only been for a couple of days and they've come straight off again. Um, so yeah, very hardy. Um, really nice looking palm, evergreen interest. Um, we'll compare that to the air spather and this is not going to be true totally true but they, they do look quite different and that's just because the bootier odorata can vary a lot in color from straight green to minty green to almost a uh, silvery this one's sort of a silvery green and then we'll look at the air spather and again Look at the fronds on this. This is a, a, a considerably smaller palm, but um, just a true green rather than any sort of silver effects to it. Um, again, it is tied up just for ease to, to put a fleece bag over it if necessary. So, again, sort of true deep green or light to mid to light green very very nice color but yeah compared to Bootie Odorat which is sort of more of a silvery um yeah so the differences in the area spaver to the odorata this is the odorata um we can see the green does go all the way down the, the petiole the leaf base right to the very bottom so sort of true green all the way the area spather is slightly slightly colored i wouldn't say red sort of more of a, a brown but a little bit of color towards the very tips or the terminal points if you like to the trunk um and it is Slightly more fibres, the, the, the fibres are brown. More of a, a true brown rather than a, a straw. Like it is on this odorata here. So the Aerospaver is commonly called the, the woolly bootier. Um, and therefore suspected to be a little bit hardier. And I would say it is slightly hardier 
um, just down to maybe the extra fibres around the trunk um, could help insulate it a little bit better but I have found that the the tips and considering this is a considerably smaller plant to the bootier bootier older art we've just been looking at this air spather um, is a lot finer leaflets at this size and yet they're still taking the cold well so again this boot year odor has extra size to it the, the leaflets are bigger wider and uh, yeah so at, we could say at that size that's going to be the same hardiness as this smaller palm whereas a smaller boot year odor may take damage to the very tips of the leaves um, whereas the boot year spava beauty air spather won't I mean and just to, to, to give this palm real credit I've grown this this has been in this position in the garden since a, a two leaf strap strap seedling um, very small and it's came through every winter I've never really seen much damage on it even when we've had sort of minus seven never really had any major damage on it I mean some of the old spears we can see is a little bit of brown spotting but in general very tough so for the UK for our climate I would say that the air spay that is definitely a little bit hardier than the odorata so this sort of brings us on to the subject of the uh, booty agris air spay which I know a lot of people brought last year when they became available a bit more easily available and uh, so that booty agris is a cross between this palm the booty air spaver compared to and it's crossed with the mountain form Santa Caterina form of the queen palm so and I will say I've actually got that specific queen palm and we'll have a quick look at that now because that is relevant so this queen palm again the mountain form so a bit harder than the standard this is taken minus seven last year it did have a little bit of damage on the emergent frond um, and that would be this leaf here where we did lose a few leaflets on it but this year at minus four the new frond no problem whatsoever not seen any damage on that at all so when you look put that queen palm hardy form of queen palm and cross that with the uh, hardier bootier air spather this is what you get a bootie agris air spather and would I say it's as hardy as the hype probably not it is tied up but I can see there is damage um, definitely on some of the leaflets they've browned at the ends is that a fair test first winter out well of course it's not these have been grown from seed i believe from hardy palms and they've been overwintered in a polytunnel covered up they've never seen a frost probably never seen you know extended nights of below minus so it's not a, a fair test to say oh they're not as hardy as we thought they're going to be because the the two palms that it's crossed with as we've just looked at are both considerably considerably hardy and i'm not going to say the queen palm is totally hardy i do protect it 
but it doesn't take damage where this Booty Agra Service Spaver has taken damage but again not a fair test because it's the first winter out I would be willing to bet that it's going to be at the very least as hardy as the the Queen Palm Mountain Queen um, in a year or two you know give it a few winters let it build up a bit of size and at the very least this should be able to take minus six minus seven with very little damage minus eight onwards still question mark again the, this is early days for this uh, hybrid palm here in the UK um, so yeah looking at this it's looking rough no doubt about it and, and I haven't untied it so I will do a untie um, maybe in March when the, the, the chance not that the chance of frost is gone in March but the, the chance of a a deep you know cold frost I mean a, a light frost is not going to be an issue so that will be untied and we'll have a proper look at it then we'll do a video later on for that but um yeah not looking good at the moment but certainly not look like it's going to die on me they have got the genetics to survive but they just haven't had the acclimatization to take you know shrug off any damage that's going to take damage for the first couple of years um so this is just looking at you know one palm in particular um oh, i'll have a quick look at the other booties because they do all vary a little bit i mean not just in color but in form as well how much arch you get to the leaves and um, this one is quite tightly recurved i mean a couple of these lower fronds have popped out where i've tied it and I've not been concerned about tying it back up because they are tough and we haven't had cold temperatures. Um, but we can see it's a real, really tight recurve on that leaf, which is true to all the leaves on this. Really, really tight curve on that. Um, yeah, spather. Yeah, this is a curve on it, but it's nowhere near as tight. Um, we will look at the one over here because again just sl slight subtle variations so the, the boot yoder over there was green all the way all the way to the trunk whereas this one uh, it is true to the newer leaves but as they age they do darken off um and this one is nowhere near a tight recurve so even in the same species there's going to be genetic variation obviously i will say for people who says that palms don't grow over winter i did do a video on this in december and i said this spear was literally that it was a spear that was tight closed and uh, here we are middle of winter two probably about two months later and a start to open up so we know that is still pushing that is growing at a very very slow pace but it's not you know that they still do grow um yeah so they're, they're not i've heard people say oh palm trees don't grow over winter they sit dormant and they won't grow it's under 15 degrees or something worse absolute rubbish because they'll grow year round but just at a very very slow pace um so just finishing up on the the last boot year odor odorata so again this is the only damage on this one is wind damage so that is again tied up But as we can see, we've lost a couple of tips of some some of the fronds just due to the wind literally snapping them. So I will cut that, a clean cut on that one. And we've actually lost another tip here as well where it's snapped in the wind. We've had a lot of storms this winter. 
so that will have to be cut as well um but again this one is similar to the first one we looked at with a very very tight recurve so there's differences in the same species um obviously bigger differences in the different species as regards to the booty bootier aerospather but as regard to the booty agaris the cross um jury's going to be out on that one of exactly how tough it's going to be it's, like i say still a new palm for the uk really is still I wouldn't say experimental because like I say that both parents should be pretty tough and hardy but this is going to be over the next few years and this is where everyone who's growing them we can sort of cross reference to other people's areas and and experiences that every palm is going to be slightly genetically different same as people you know brothers and sisters in the same family they all look they may have similarities, but they look different. Same as palms, same as any plant. They, the overall effect is going to look similar, but there's going to be very subtle, subtle differences, and every palm is going to behave differently. I brought two of these uh, Booty Agris Aerospathers, and they both looked very, I won't say very different, but they did look different. Like there was definite differences between the two. Um... At the time when I brought them, I will say they both were pretty much exactly the same size, trunk wise, and one went straight in the ground and one went straight into a pot. And the potted one has definitely got a bigger trunk on it now, thicker, girthier trunk than this one. And that's just due to the pot warming up more in the summer than the soil would so warmer roots uh, probably um, better soil in the pot when I originally done it obviously that's gonna nutrients will run out quickly in a pot so for the first year pot grown considerably better second third year that will slow down one in the ground will take over um, not for me because I'll be planting the one in the pot in the in the ground come the spring but um, yeah, I will do a video on the comparison between the two when it comes to you know time to plant out. That may be another month and a half or so as yet. So I hope this helps any anyone who's thinking about buying one. I've got one and not sure of the hardiness and thinking, oh, it's, it's, I'm disappointed that's been damaged. Well, of course it is. If you had any hardy palm has been looked after and pampered in a greenhouse over winter and you put it out for the first winter and it takes a frost that's going to damage the leaves no matter how hardy the palm even if the trek cut was fortune i if that had been molly and just totally looked after never seen a frost and you planted that out to the elements with the wind and the frosts and that's going to look rough as well so I wouldn't use this first year of growing these outside as as a base point, but it's not a general reference. It's not going to be that way forever. They will get hardier with time. The genetics say they're going to be hardy or hardy-ish for a lot of the UK. So all we can do is keep an eye out for the next few years and see what happened with them. Right, I could go on all day talking. I mean, palms obviously are my, my favourite plant to talk about. And to a lot of you, it may not be significant differences between the palms. Obviously, you know, these sort of booties that we're looking at. But when you're into palms or any plant, these subtle differences can make it all, you know, makes makes it worth growing different species. Um. I think we'll leave it there we've uh i think we've uh covered the 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 basics and uh we will catch you on the next one thanks for watching